City Gates Christian Center podcast, bringing a message of hope to the lonely, broken, and wounded. Amen. How many of you enjoyed the conference? The previous. Uh, <laughs> what was that? Very <laughs> good. Last uh, Thursday and Friday, how many of you there is a conference? Uh, it was an awesome time, awesome uh, uh, experience. Uh, we are really into it. Uh, I'd like to appreciate all the volunteers, the multimedia. Come on, let's give them a hand, everyone. From actually every every staff, every volunteer uh, that uh, have given their time, talent, energy for the conference. God is good. Amen. God is good. God is good. And He is building your life. Alright, welcome to Project 52. This is our second Sunday. Satu ang Project Celebrate. You ready for the word? Come on, let's pray. Father, thank you that you are in the business of building our lives. God, that you are the one who brings order sa among mga kinabuhi. Today, we want to celebrate that goodness that you have shown us. And we want to listen and focus on what you're about to tell us today. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Project 52 is about building lives. It's about ordering our private world so that the outside can be brought into order as well. We talk about, you know, a strong building, a strong foundation. We talk about order. God is a God of order. And we're going to look at things that will bring us to the next level. See, we, we've seen the skip you know, how how God's Word can transform our lives. How our spirits needs to be aligned before the Lord. How our soul, our body, our whole being needs to acknowledge His source. Amen. And it's very powerful how God can move mightily in our lives. From the story of Nehemiah, they were able to build the wall in 52 days. And that has been our key verse. The wall was finished just 52 days after we had begun. And in 52 days, you know, God will build your life. He will build your life if you allow Him to do so. It's going to bring about a transformation. As a matter of fact, some of you have sensed a new beginning. Deep inside our being longs for transformation. And I believe the Holy Spirit brings that desire. We have been doing our own thing, pursuing our whatever it is that makes us happy. But we know that when God is not there, wala pinaghuhugutan. Wala tayo makuptan. We cannot hold on to something substantial or satisfactory or even fulfilling. We know our lives are always and still empty despite all the things that we have. And so, in Project 52, it's very important to talk about these things. Last week, we talked about how to build a strong or a solid foundation. You know, begin with God. We need to update the standard of our lives, identify these common enemies, his excuses and that we need to dare to win. God wants us to win. The devil wants us to sin. Again, tell the person next to you, God wants you to win. Alright. Now today we're going to look at the importance of having our priorities right. Priority is important. Priority is a must. See, we cannot bring order to our lives if we have wrong priorities. Dili mahan ay, there will be no order. Putting our priorities right means having order in our lives. Like in the alphabet, it has an order. A, B, C, D, di ba? So it has an order. Numbers. You cannot start with nine. You have to start with one. And then two, three, and so on, and so forth. In, in uh, restaurants or in a, in a processing of food, you know, na gina practice na kaya panila first in, first out. And there's a season 
winter, spring, summer, fall, or whatever order. It's very important to have order, a system, otherwise there will be chaos. A lot of people are going through chaos, obviously, because they have placed wrong priorities. It's very important to have lasting, to have joy, to have lasting fulfillment, satisfaction. Order is a must. Prioritizing our lives, lives is crucial. Putante kayo. God knows that. That's why we talk about foundation. Order, organize, to systematize, to methodize. It means to put persons or things into proper places in relation to each other. And it's so true, having wrong priorities will mess up your life. If you don't put in the right priority, your life, it's only a matter of time, will be messed up. Perhaps there are areas that need realignment right now in your life. Things are out of the order. Your finance is in a mess. Marriage may be in a chaos. You know, your kids, they're not responding right. Emotions going in a roller coaster side, you feel good and then automatically you go down and, and, and these things indicate lack of order and lack of order means we have placed wrong priorities and eventually cause chaos in our lives order is crucial if we are to attain success in life and God notices in our lives when you know we are out of order and he prompts us to change he will whisper he will shout he will use a circumstance when you read the bible you will you will be convicted you hear other people you look at them their lives are in order and you get guilty or perhaps you know sometimes when our hearts are so callous and then so hardened and we have been accustomed to, you know, things that are not in order. In our rooms, sometimes we go in our rooms and immediately we just do this and do that. And when our parents would come, they would say, what's happening here? You know, your underwear is in the window. Your socks all over. Tanan is in chaos. But he said, what's wrong? How many of you have rooms like that? Don't raise your hands, for goodness sake. But then we can be accustomed to a lack of order to the point we don't notice that we are going down. We're not noticing that we are self-destructing. We're not noticing that, you know, it's getting messy. And people would notice it. And you'll be the last man, the last person who would notice your life going out of order. God is good. Project 52 is about building a solid foundation. It's about putting our priorities right, seeking the main thing to be the main thing. Putting God first is very crucial. I cannot overemphasize the fact that a lot of people are going through pain because they have not put in the right priority. Our lives are in order. We need the help. We need help. We need to acknowledge and say, I need something. I need an order in my life. You see, the idea is if things are not in proper order, most likely there would not be any peace. There would not be any satisfaction. Again, without order, our lives will be in chaos. So many lives are out of order, so they live lives that are confusing. Come on, let's sit, set our lives in order. Many lives are not in order, and so, you know, we miss to enjoy life. Rather, we endure life. Chaos. Lack of order. When we miss to use things we use relationships to get things 
We miss to worship God. We worship the creation of God. We miss to hang out with friends, but instead we hang out with things. We miss to spend time with kids in exchange for money. And when we're older, all the money we have will not buy the necessary time to spend with our kids. We need to bring our lives in order. Amen? Bring your life in order. Alright, how do we bring our lives to order? How to bring our lives sa sakto ma-order? And the verse in uh, Luke chapter 10, and during the conference, this verse, this uh, this uh, passage was just burning, my, burning in my heart. In verse 38, it says there, As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed her, him into her home. And uh, her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. Okay? And a picture was Martha welcoming Jesus into her home. And Mary, you know, Jesus started ministering and talking about life. And I'm sure when we invite Jesus in our lives, He starts to notice things. He starts to point out things. And here, you know, immediately, Mary understood the importance of the person that was in this presence in Lahambalai, their guest. And so in verse 40, it says, But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus she said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I'll do, I'll do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. Mary has discovered the right order. Mary understood the importance of first things first. And I pray that today, you know, God will open our hearts. We will also see, we will understand the importance of placing God first in our lives. And so when we look at this, see, how to bring order to our lives. Again, how many here wants order? Okay, tanaw na to. Unas tanan. You see, there's, there's Jesus. He was, He's always present. When our lives especially are going in a chaos, when there's no peace, there's no joy and no satisfaction you know it doesn't mean that God's not there as a matter of fact when we go through these things a lot of signals a lot of you know warning lights they come off they give us a warning wake up wake up wake up when 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 we go through pain it is God's signal that our life is out of order. When we're no longer enjoying, enjoying life, but rather enduring life, we're out of order. When our emotions, you know, go wild, when fears are constant, when disappointments, and there's, you know, a lot of these negative emotions, when these things become dominant, it indicates something. We're out of order. When we are easily angered, when we're easily upset, something is eating up in your soul. And when you're not able to control it, you're out of order. When it's easy for you to give up, when it's easy for you to surrender and call it quits, I'm telling you, it's just this one time when a person blows up, it's not because of that little detail, that little thing that upsets that person. It is an accumulated things 
that makes that person burst just like that. You see, every time Jesus comes, and in, 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 in this situation, Jesus and his disciples, they're on their way, they came to a certain village, and there is this woman named Martha. And Martha, you know, we don't know the whole story. The good thing about Martha is she welcomed Jesus into her home. The first the very first thing we need to do if we are, we are to have order in our lives is that we need to open up. We need to open our home to God. Amen. Open your home to God. How many of you, you've opened yourself up to God? I don't know. What would God find? Home... You know, it means a place. It's more than a house. It's a place. It's a residence. It's the place in which one's domestic affections are centered. Home. A home of what? Home of emotions. A home of thoughts. It is a place. Okay? And we need to, you need to open your home to God. Home, it can mean your life. It means your life. You open your body to God. What would God find in your life? If you allow Him to come in, He will start to notice things. If you allow God to come and invade your thoughts, He will start correcting you. And He will start telling you, this is going overboard. How many here, you want your life built? How many here, if you ever desire in your life a change, lasting change, if you are ever here this morning and you're, you're desiring for something more than what you're having right now, you have to open your home to God. You have to start opening up Owning up and telling God, Lord, I need you. It doesn't matter how long you may have been in church and whatever, you know, how, however uh, deep you are in your knowledge, in your walk with God. I find it every single time that when a person goes through something, that person had shut off. That person had closed its doors on the conviction of God. When things go wrong in our lives, start to evaluate. Have I been open to God lately? Amen? Most of us, you know, we can be very private with, uh, private with our lives. And we can, you know, we have uh, confidentials and we have things. Uh, that uh, just for our use, right? Um, in our context, perhaps it's different. Almost everybody just goes in and out of a life. Amen? How many of you wants that kind of life? Anyways, it doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't bother me. You know, I've always, we've always, me and my wife, we've always asked our kids, what do you want? To live in a place just us, or you want family? They say we want family. We want the oikos. There's, uh, I think half of you lives in our house. <laughs> so many people in the house. About pinatagabok mga twenty plus. But it doesn't bother. But it doesn't bother me. We have been, you know, we we've grown accustomed to, you know, seeing. Slippers all over the place, sapatos, sandals, and who owns this? I mean, it doesn't matter whether I grew up, you know, having that kind of atmosphere, and it doesn't bother me. But the point is, we become so accustomed with one another, and okay lang, and uh, very familiar with each other sometimes, mag sinagita yun sa balay. And people think we're quarreling, but we're not. We're just normal conversation. 
The point is, it's okay, people can get accustomed. And a group of people can do specific things, good or bad, eventually they go together not noticing sometimes we do things together as barcadas you know as we have friends and we're doing wrong things we need God to enter our homes to enter our lives he is the ultimate authority of order Sometimes we think we are doing okay, but when God checks us out, we we'll realize there's so many more that needs to change. As a church, we've always centered everything around God. It's not about an inclination of the group. It's not about the thoughts of you know some some person. It's not it's not my ideas. It's always about God. Amen. We want our lives to progress. Let's not base it on our own wisdom. Let's not base it on our own understanding. Always base it upon God. That's why you need to open up your life, your home to God. Your emotions to God. How many of you have told God lately, Lord? You know what? She's so cute. Lord, ganahan naging kasayahan. Ha? How many of you? Gisultihan na ba ninyo ang ginawa sa inyong crush? We need to open up. Let's see. Martha here, for whatever reason, maybe she's heard Jesus, and I'm sure she's, she's heard Jesus, done a lot of great things. When Jesus in, is in town, He does miracles, signs, wonders, healings. He provides, He opens the blind eyes, He causes the deaf ears to hear. When Jesus is in town, when Jesus is around, things are just chaotic things, they just go into order. God is always about order. He is always about change for the better. And so, she invited him. It's about time to invite Jesus. In your thoughts, in your relationships, make him first. Open up. Open. Bring order. Oh, these are a place, a residence of something that we value. Allow God to enter your homes. And then, right about when Jesus came, her sister, Martha's sister, Mary, sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. So many times, you know, Jesus has already been convicting us, but we're not listening. The second thing we need to do, if we are to bring order to our lives, is we need to receive these instructions. Receive godly instructions. If you want order, you need to be listening. To listen, to hear what He is saying. The moment He starts to convict you of something, listen, hear, understand what He wants. Mary was so keen on receiving Jesus' instructions to the point that She's left Martha on her own doing the, you know, the preparations. What Martha was doing obviously is not wrong. Jesus is a guest, right? And you'll see later, you know, there is not a point of comparison what Martha and Mary did. But it's the heart of Mary to receive godly instruction. You know, there will always be voices of fear. There will always be this voice of greed, this condemnation. We hear them a lot of time. And that's why we are in, in fear. When we're, when we're in fear, we're in chaos. When we, are this, when we are feeling condemned, it's because we did something wrong. And these voices keep harassing us. Voices of regrets and shame. 
lack, poverty, insecurity, all these negative voices, you can always hear them. And, and all of the time, these are causing chaos in our lives. And so we go out of order. The moment we listen to, to these evil voices, we go out of order. It is crucial, therefore, that we, most importantly, we receive godly instruction. Mary did that. Mary did that. On the other hand, Martha was doing a lot of stuff. She was worried about many things. But I want us to focus on this. Every time you read your Bible, make sure you receive a godly instruction. Make sure you receive a word from God. Something that is specific sa imuha kinabuhi. Something that you are going through and He will really speak. If you want order in your life, receive these words from God. And you're going about sa mga cell groups, you know, godly wisdom and advice from our leaders, we can learn a lot from them. Order. Come on, say with me, order. Order is important. Open up. And when you start to open up, and you allow Jesus in your life, in your home, and you allow godly thoughts, you start to say, Lord, speak to me. I allow you to see what's inside my heart. Lord, I, I want to invite you in my thoughts. I don't want to think about negative things anymore. Receive godly instructions. And then it says, But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. As a matter of fact, I wish my Lord, tell, it doesn't seem unfair, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I'll do all the work. Tell her to come and help me. Jesus said otherwise. I want to emphasize at this point, the third, in order for us to bring order sa Tokyanabuhi, we need to develop focus. Amen? For as long as there is the devil, there will always be distractions. The devil will always try to distract you. So your gaze, ang imong panlantaw, it's not set on God. So that you will be, you know, looking at your fears. There will always be demands at work that can take us out of our right priorities. There will be deadlines, be quotas, schedules, and appointments. If we want to bring order to our lives, develop focus. It's very important that we look at the bigger picture. It's very important that we say, I want this marriage built on a solid foundation. I'm going to focus. I'm not going to be distracted but by what is happening right now. I need to say, God, I need your orders. Lord, I open up my life. Lord, what can you say? It's not your perception sa imong asawa. It's not your perception to your husband. It's what God says about the situation. When you look at your career, you look at your you know, job, you need to focus on what God is saying. What is right. You need to develop focus and not be distracted by the voices of corruption around you. By fears around us. Develop focus. Martha, she forgot why she invited Jesus. She was so conscious in, obviously, being hospitable is good. Amen. And uh, I don't know about you know, most of us, when we have guests, we're very hospitable. But Martha forgot why Jesus was there. He was there to bring order. Sometimes you're forgetting why we're in church. We're here in church. Obviously, you know, there are a lot of good things. We are encouraged. We hear, you know, sometimes, makita na to, we are not entertained, but we get, we feel good. We're able to unload our burdens before the Lord. 
How many of you are enjoying that every Sunday? When we worship God, it's very therapeutic. You know, He speaks to us. And when we listen to the Word, you know, God causes these words to become relevant to our lives and we can relate. Sometimes we laugh, sometimes we cry, sometimes you know, we're just overwhelmed. But let's not lose focus. Let's not think that Sundays are just so we can enjoy or so we can be built up. It's not just about us enjoying on the outside, but it's most of all us changing on the inside. It's very important that the spillover of what we do in our, in our Sunday celebrations, every time we read the Word, it must change our lives. Focus! Amen. We need to develop focus. What is it, Lord, that you want me to receive today? Lord, what is it that you want me to change in my life today? God is about change. God visited the house of Martha and Mary not to be served. He was there to serve. He was there, obviously, you know, to bring about a transformation in every household. There is always something that needs to be in place. What is it, Jemokinabuhi, right now? What is it that you are facing right now? God means business. He really, does. He, re he really means business. And He does it effectively. He does it best when we ourselves cry out before Him and open up our lives to Him. We say, God, I need order in my life. Lord, I need order sa mong finance. Lord, I need order sa kong mga fears, sa kong mga doubts, in my thoughts. I need order sa kong pamilya. Lord, I just need transformation. I just need order. And so, He speaks to us. We need to receive that. And so, we need to develop focus. Put first things first. Don't be distracted. But the things are in you. It doesn't matter how much money you have. If your life is out of order. If your emotions out of order. If your spiritual walk with God is out of order. Eventually, your life will be chaotic. It doesn't matter, you know, how good you feel right how, how good you feel right now. Things are very temporal. Emotions. You cannot lean on it. I'm sharing this morning in our devotions, no, the Apostle Paul said, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor mind has conceived the things God has prepared in advance for those who love Him. And so this time, when we are not seeing things in our lives the way we want to, when we're not hearing the, 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 the right words or when we're not hearing good news and positive vibes in Manila. When our minds could not fathom why we're going through what we are going through. We need to unplug from these faculties of sight and hearing and imagining. And we need to develop that focus in listening to God and His Spirit prompts us, His Spirit gives us hope and His wisdom will whisper to you change it's not just coming change has come say Mom, Amen, develop focus and afterwards you know you're going to see Martha Lord, ask her to help me but Jesus said to Martha, my dear Martha you are worried and upset over all these details. How many of you want order? If you want order in your life, open your home to God. Receive Godly instruction. Develop focus. And you need to eliminate worries. Worries over all these details. Worries can easily and quickly put 
put your life out of order. You're already worried 10 years from now. What would happen? My, my kids are growing up. You know? Where will I get all the money to send them to college? Por vida. Grade 1 pala. Don't worry about all these details. Lord, kinsa may akong maminiwan. Pastilan. Jis anyos pa ka. Diba? Asa manggawas, tanan, mga kabalaga, all these fears, all these worries will cause us not to enjoy the reality of the present. Come on, Martha. How many are Marthas here? God is saying, Martha, don't worry about all those details. Don't worry about that. I'm not worried about that. Just enjoy what I have for you right at this time. Many of us can relate. We have lots of worries. But worries are number one killer of promotion. My dear Martha, you are worried. You are upset. As if God is not in control. So you're not smiling anymore just because of a little thing. You need to understand, God is in control. And the moment we allow Him in our lives, the moment we allow Him to speak to us, there will be no room for insecurity. There will be no room for doubt. There will be no room for fears and worries. Receive these godly instructions and develop your focus. Fix your eyes on God. Fix your eyes on His ability to provide. Eliminate worries. Eliminate fears. Don't focus too much on your lack. Focus on God's ability to provide. Don't worry too much about, you know, these things that you don't have. Don't worry too much about the future. God's already been there. God's prepared that place for you. Don't worry. Never worry about anything. And obviously, we can be upset. We can, you know, there's a lot of things that only sahan. Don't worry about the 100, ika 100. You're still at number 16. Worry about 17 and 18. Obviously, we need to prepare. Obviously, we need to plan. But what Jesus is trying to teach us here is eliminate worries. You cannot do anything without God. You cannot manipulate your way into success. If you're able to do it, it will be momentary. Kunana ka sa taas, if you get there without God, eventually that accomplishment is worth nothing. Eliminate worries. And most of all, and highlight on this last one, Jesus said, there is only one thing worth being concerned about. And Mary has discovered it. And it will not be taken away from her. It's only one thing. Tell the person next to you one thing. One thing. And that is God Himself. Remain in God. When you remain set on God, you will never worry. You'll never be distracted. You'll not have to listen to the lies of the devil. Your life, your home, will never be subjected to evil's destructive power. Amen. How many of you, this morning, you will bring order sa ibang kinabuhi? Amen. Ignan mo tapad order. Let's all stand to our feet. Let's bring order sa itong mga kinabuhi. I want to pray this morning specifically. If you are here, come on, let's all stand. If you are here and you're thinking, God, my emotion is out of order. If you're here and say, God, my family is out of order. God, my life is out of order. Maybe your thoughts is out of order.
order is the, the, the principle of order is very important we cannot achieve peace if we constantly fear about tomorrow order and he is a God of order the Holy Spirit God he has been desiring to bring you in a different level God is in the business of changing lives and, and all the things that we do as a church we say God we want we want them to be about you we want them to be focused on you and so this morning come on why don't you open up your heart to God why don't you open your home to me as we just minister um, to one another, we're gonna we're gonna be praying in a while. But right now, identify what are your fears, what are your worries. Right now, what are the things that you're seeing? And God is telling you that's a wrong focus. Come on. I 
Christian Center podcast. For more updates, like our page on Facebook at City Gates Christian Center or visit us at citygatescebu.org.